Who will be the big stars tonight for San Antonio Ginobili has been magnificent in both games Duncan steady as always who will step up for Detroit Wallace jumping against Mohammed Crawford ready to put the ball in the air and here we go in game three and it's a back tap as the ball goes out of bounds and in fact Billy Crawford now signaling that the ball will belong to San Antonio right they're saying that they tried to steal the tap. It'll be interesting to see in this first quarter if Detroit changes their defensive schemes. And by that we mean early double teaming, possibly on dribblers, especially Ginobili, or hard, maybe traps, and also maybe taking the traps out past the top of the circle. Let's see what happens if there is a change in their philosophy. Mono Ginobili now will come over. He will inbound the ball. Right in front of us, Nazi Mohammed was here a moment ago. Stuttering start to the game. But here we go. And it's knocked away by Ben Wallace. And Wallace with a jam. And a foul is called. You talk about a perfect start for a ball club. Talking to Popovich today, his number one concern turnovers. You cannot turn the ball over here tonight. You must limit them because. The turnover will get them out on the break. The layup will get the building going and then momentum. And then you have a 42% lifetime free throw shooter making the free throw. So it took four seconds for the steal. Popovich said the other night before game two, he really feared Ben Wallace after his performance in game one. Ben did not step up in game two, but comes out flying in game three. Here's Bowen, and we've got a foul. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And Ginobili's hurt. Yes, he did. Yeah, he got it right in the knee. It happened right in front of us. There was a collision. Let's see what they're doing. They're bringing Brent Barry in right now. Very quickly, Barry off the bench. Now keep an eye right there. All right, it was a knee-to-knee -knee deal. Now let's just hope that it's a stinger. Uh, rather than anything serious. So Barry comes in. Popovich would love to start the game again after that beginning. Wallace the three point play. Ginobili out at least for the moment. Barry is in. There goes Wallace inside. Gets it back. Batted up by Bowen. And San Antonio. We'll start into the front court with Parker bringing it in. Now at home in games one and two, the excellent ball movement from one side of the floor to the other caused problems from a defensive standpoint for Detroit. Mohammed on a turnaround. We want to bring up the X fact that we talked about in games one and two. Mohammed and Ori, who will replace him, are averaging in this series now 18 points and 11 rebounds. Now that is a major contribution at one spot. Here's Hamilton. Hamilton is hitting 33% in the series coming into the game. Prince gets doubled in trouble and gets fouled. I like the aggressiveness of San Antonio. Anytime that you have a prime time score down in the low box around that baseline area, they are coming strong with that double team. And they have in games one and two. And that's two, two fouls on Mohammed. You guys saw oh, that's big. That's very, very big because Mohammed has been consistent. He's given them the points and the rebounding, and especially the offensive rebounding with two shot blocks a game. Robert Ori in the game for him. Hamilton missing his first effort of the night. So San Antonio has already gone to the bench for two substitutions in the first minute and a half of the game. And then Barry from outside. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, that, that's Brent Barry's first field goal, but we know that during the playoffs, he has been scoring 12 points a game during the season. A major contributor playing 24, 25 minutes. Those were his first points of this series. And Phillips comes away with the offensive rebound. And Wallace has it knocked away by Oregon. Now, for our point guard, Chauncey Phillips just does not give you points, good decisions, assists. Throughout this series and the playoffs, he's giving you five rebounds a game. That's big for a point guard. Inbounding in front of you, saw Ginobili working on his knee, flexing it. He had to come out of the game just seconds into the game. Here's Rasheed Wallace. 
Uh, if he backs you down to that area, if Worry does not hold him off, you know, he'll have the field day. The key thing is to keep him involved in the game for all of the minutes that he's out there, 33 to 36. Ben Barry, Father Rick was in San Antonio the other night. Can't make the layup. Prince comes away with it for Detroit. Payson looking to get high. He was one for seven the other night. Ori guarding Wallace. Moves in on him nice. again. Off the glass. Rashid Wallace. See, that's a very tough cover. In games one and two, Duncan would be on Wallace. And then you make your substitution with about four minutes to go in the quarter. But right now, Ori has him, and you must take advantage of that because Wallace can shoot up over the top at will. Duncan guarded by Ben Wallace, the defensive player of the year, and it's Great blocked. Ball. And then Bowen's able to tap it, but out of bounds it goes. Detroit has it. Well, Piston fans, Piston coaches, Piston players have been waiting for Ben to really step up now with a dominant game on the boards and in the shot clock. And there goes Billups all the way, but too hard off the glass. But now Duncan to Barry. Ori comes out of the corner all the way to the basket, and you've got Wallace in there again, but this time a foul. As you watch this game and you appreciate what San Antonio will do out on the break, when they have an advantage three on two, four on three, they are very good finishers in the open floor, but if not, this is where they hurt you in the three-point game with the kickouts out to the wing. Ori injuring his shoulder at least slightly, but not to the extent he has to come out of the game. You've got Ginobili on the bench. You've got Mohammed with two fouls already for the Spurs. Here's the Ori play. Yeah, the foul was over his shoulder. You could see it from the back. But that's what you like about what's going on here. In games one and two, the ability of San Antonio to put the ball down on the floor, not just with their three perimeter players, Bowen, Ginobili, or Parker, but also at their four position, whether it be Duncan or Ori, taking you off the dribble and putting fouls on the front line of Detroit. Ori makes one of two. The Piston lead is one, eight and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter in Auburn Hills. Phillips with Parker on him. Hamilton trying to get free, but Bowen sticking to him like blue as he has all series. Prince feeds back to Rashid. Doesn't get the bounce. Duncan clear out. Now, that's the second easy basket that they have missed inside of three feet. Now, you know, we harped on that a lot there in game two, but that was a major factor in them falling behind. They must score inside of six to eight feet. Bowen. Duncan comes out, 15 feet away, and Duncan is whistled for the offensive foul. Now that was beautiful positioning by a big man. Now just watch the quickness of feet here. See, he anticipated where Duncan was going. The elbow went out, caught, caught Ben Wallace right in the number, and then naturally we know that uh, Tim Duncan can't knock that Ben Wallace down. <laughs> no. if, he, if Ben Wallace is just a draw out, outside the building. But here, a little bit of a flop, but a little bit of a, a blow in the chest. Rasheed misses the layup, and Wallace is there, and Ben Wallace is off to a great start. This was what Popovich feared the other night. Didn't happen. Back at the Palace of Auburn Hills, where the Pistons lead by three, and the San Antonio Spurs have taken a little bit of a hit. Early in this game, Manu Ginobili, who has been the star of this series, collided with Tayshawn Prince, took a knee to his own left knee. It turns out it is a thigh contusion. He is returning to the game, but we saw what a thigh contusion did to Shaquille O'Neal in the playoffs earlier. Manu is coming back. They put some Flexol above that knee. Flexol Al is basically like Ben Gay. We know that's used to just keep the muscle loose and warm he's back as you see we'll see how it impacts him Al and take a look at that Michelle on the court for 48 minutes plus 14 is San Antonio but when you sit him down in the playoffs they would wind up losing on a 48 minute basis by five points here goes Bowen 
Inside has it knocked away, but Duncan is right there. I like the Detroit defense, though, Al. I know they gave up the second opportunity, but they got the shot block and the rotations were there. We're seeing a lot of fire, a lot of spark here in their movements. Richard Hamilton, look at Bowen. All over him, but Hamilton is able to free up enough for the basket. 11-8. Well, you know, they need to get Hamilton off and Rasheed Wallace. Tony Parker. Uh, Ori gets in there for the offensive rebound. You, you're not this down, Ori. You've got to put a body on him and chase him because he will go 10 to 12 feet to get a loose ball. Rasheed Wallace knocks it out of bounds. 16 on the 24. 11-8 Detroit. Parker inbounding. Now Ginobili, his first touch since he had to come off the floor in the opening seconds of the game. And then his bounce pass inside is picked off by Tayshawn Prince. That was an excellent switch on the pick in a row with, with the switch man fronting Duncan looking for the pass. Nice move. Phillips to Wallace. Van Wallace. Beautiful pass, great execution. They were relying on the rotation. And then Parker answers. 13-10 Detroit. Ginobili, in the brief time in which he's played tonight, has already turned the ball over three times. The hallmark of the way San Antonio played in the first two games was to protect the ball, and they did it extremely well. Hamilton against Bowen. Two in a row for Rick. Yeah, I like that. They're running him on the baseline to the weak side so that he's posting up. No double team is coming because they feel that Bowen can take him one on one. Both scores came off of excellent head fake. And you have a defensive three second call here. Defensive three second ball against Detroit. Yeah, right now is on Rasheed Wallace. Uh, Rasheed came right out to Joey Crawford. He wanted him to explain it to him because he honestly thought that he had good cover. Ginobili shoots the technical. And that's his first point of the game. Roger Nesterovich will come into the game replacing Robert Ory. Right now what you have to do is you know that you need Ory for major minutes later. You know that Nesterovich is a proven playoff player. He played the first 77 games for you before he was replaced after an injury. And unfortunately for him, he's never been able to get back in there. Wallace is there again. Nesterovich, meanwhile, has played only four minutes in the first two games in this series, and it's off him. And with 18 on the 24, Detroit to inbound. But it's nice to bring in a guy seven feet who is an excellent defender who can block shots and rebound and who is also playoff experience. Hamilton. Working off the screen, but he's picked up by Nesterovich. Oh, now, got a mismatch here. Rashid, yep. And they can't exploit it, but Rashid gets it back. Prince, Bowen is on him. And Ginobili comes away with the ball. We know that Prince is struggling. We don't want to harp on it. We just want to bring out the point that the majority of his shots are short. He just has to relax a little bit. And Bowen on his 34th birthday celebrates with a three. 15-14 Pistons. Well, Bruce Bowen, you know, he'll attempt in this series. Now he's averaging five attempts a game. Detroit will lay off him until he proves that he can hit consistently. From the corner, Prince again. Yeah. Everything's off the front of the rim now. I see Parker is looking at this right now. He feels he can take Prince right off the dribble. And he lays it up from the lane, and that's short. And Wallace gets it out quickly to Phillips. Hamilton now with Duncan on him. Drives by him. Can't put it in. I like that guy. 
Challenge Duncan, force Duncan to play you. You never know when you get down in there. You pick up a foul on a big man. Rip, Rip actually gets by Duncan and gets a high percentage shot. Oh, and Wallace almost stole it again, but this time he commits the foul as he goes by Ginobili. Well, Ben Wallace leads all the playoff players with 34 steals. Now this is just, he just bangs, see? Now it was, it was excellent position, but by reaching with his right arm, he takes right into Ginobili and knocks him back. First foul on Ben Wallace. Second team foul. Mano Ginobili. And Mano Ginobili is able to knock down his first field goal of the game to make it 17-15 San Antonio on a three-pointer. Now, look, this guy is shooting 67% in threes. So you know that when you pick him up, especially with a potential knee, knee injured here, you've got to close him out. Chauncey Billups gets inside and gets fouled. This is what we meant when we came on the show by saying Chauncey Phillips has got to be more aggressive. He can take his man down in here and post Parker up at will and stay within the offense. And by doing that, he will put the pressure on San Antonio to double team. They know that Parker cannot play Phillips one-on-one. -on -one. The problem, you foul Phillips, he's an 89% foul shooter during the season and also during playoff time. That had been a 7-0 San Antonio run, and Phillips with a three-point play to give Detroit the lead at 18-17 with a little more than three minutes to play in the period. Detroit 14 points in the paint, only two. Oh, and what a block! everywhere, but Nesterovich gets it back and puts it in. But Ben Wallace is a monster in this quarter. Al, he needs a little help here in picking up the loose balls. That's the second shot block that San Antonio recovered and laid the ball up into the basket. Spurs by one. Lindsey Hunter in off the bench. And Ginobili puts his hands up and gets called for the foul. And that's two on Manu. Defense, you know, to this team is, is what we hang our hats on. So, um, you know, coming out on the defensive end, that's when we win games that you know, uh, everybody on this team know that we can, you know, score the basketball. But what we take most pride in is getting stopped, forcing other teams to do things they really are not comfortable with doing. Ben Wallace hadn't done much in the first two games. What's he done tonight? He's played nine minutes. He scored seven points, and that's unusual because you don't think about Ben offensively. UB, he has five blocks. The NBA Finals record is eight in a game that's and uh, the the guys who've done it it's been done five times include Shaquille and Elijah on Bill Walton another of those Patrick Ewing and Tim Duncan's done it eight in a game Wallace has five in nine and a half minutes uh, you, you love his energy He's everywhere tonight. He's making things happen. But like we said, the other four players cannot just watch him block these shots. What they must do is garner the basketball and savor the possession. Hamilton had to get it off of the shot clock winding down. So San Antonio with the ball. Kicking down to two minutes left in the quarter. Spurs up by a point. Now, in game two, the Spurs hit 11 threes. That, that's major in a game like this. Already, they've made three in this quarter, and that's the reason for the lead. Parker with a long two from the top of the key. 21-18 San Antonio. Parker with four points. Ginobili has four points. With this unit out here right now, Rip Hamilton and also McDice on the box right there are your key people. And there is Antonio McDice with a fall away from the baseline to make it a one-point game. Under a minute and a half. Parker Hamilton picks him up and gets it up in, and he loves to go to the hoop. The majority of his shots, the vast majority taken inside six feet. Example right there. Now, there was very little room for him to get through. And one thing you know that when he comes off that pick, he gets in the paint, you know he's going to test the interior defense by snaking his way to the basket. Lindsey Hunter underneath. 
Comes up short, got no leverage on the shot. Barry. Passing it back out. Ori. <laughs> Doesn't pass up many of those. And then Barry oh, puts it in with the reverse. Wow. Well, you just, you just love their patience. They were not ready. And that's what you like. When Ori had that open shot, they do not like to take quick shots. So what they will do in their half court sets, they'll keep making the extra pass and then try to get down inside of you again. And with Chauncey Phillips driving, Joey Crawford. Signaling a defensive three seconds. Duncan will come back into the game. Now this is Brent Barry going to the basket. Coming up underneath, allowing the defender to think that he had a potential shot block. Use the basket to ward off the defender. Billups shoots the technical off the defensive three. Rasheed Wallace will come back in. Tayshawn Prince will come back in for the final half minute. Hamilton will get a rest, and so will Ben Wallace. Fourteen on the 24 second clock. Wallace got free. And it will go out of bounds to San Antonio off Antonio McDice with 20.6 seconds and the shot clock now turned off. With all of the defensive effort, the energy that we're seeing from Detroit, you're still four points down because you must you must concentrate on the three-point game and then also on the dribble penetration from the wing. Detroit has a foul to give. And then Parker is. whips it back outside the ball for a three. Now that it gets tipped up and in by Duncan. The final second, it's stolen by Bowen, who launches one that doesn't go. But the San Antonio Spurs, despite a monster first quarter by Ben Wallace. 27 to 21 San Antonio. Start the second quarter. Al Michaels, Yubi Brown, Michelle Tafoya, Stuart Scott in Auburn Hills, Michigan. We've been talking about Tony Parker. Classic example here of what he loves to do. Either off the break or with dribble penetration, he loves to go inside. He's only 6'2". You take a look at this. More than half of his shots were taken from this area. That's inside six feet. All the other shots outside six feet. So he goes in there all the time, and here it was. That was in the season. Here it is in this series, 19 inside, 13 from beyond six feet. Rarely from beyond the three-point line. Tony Parker lives inside. Well, that takes a lot of courage, Al, when you're his size, because you know you're going to have a tremendous amount of contact. Once he gets down in there, not only is he not afraid, but also he can finish, and he finishes with either hand. And here's Tayshawn Prince scoring for the Pistons to start the second quarter. And for Prince, his first basket of the game. Damo Udrick is in the game for the first time. He's the only rookie on either team and has had an impact in this series and throughout the playoffs. Ori tips it back out to the Slovenian Udrick. Okay, we want to bring up this point. That's their fifth offensive rebound. They've already scored three field goals in second shot attempt. So Detroit, everyone has got to get back in there and board so they can get out on the break and get some easy baskets. That was a McDice steal. Hamilton then whips it around to McDice, all the way over Barry in short. Barry with the rebound. If you're playing in that game and you made that curl move, you were looking for McDice to go to the basket. He should have been on the move. He had a dunk, but by catching the ball that far out, you end up with a fadeaway jump shot. And Robinson is in the game for the first time. Gets it back to Ori. That's contested. Saved at the baseline. Back from the Pistons. Hamilton. Alley oop to Prince. And that'll bring everybody to their feet. San Antonio, the defense was back. Three on three. Maybe this will get Prince going. He needs to get more involved in the game. You're talking about a young man who averaged over 14 points for you during the first three rounds of this playoff. I'll just keep an eye to the left of your screen. That's just excellent eye contact. They love to throw him the lob on the break. Right now in this series, he's been struggling. He's only scoring seven points, but more important, the shooting percentage. He's down below 30%. 
So you just got to get him off so he gets his confidence back. Ten on the clock. Duncan gets doubled as he goes in. Has it knocked away? Here comes Prince leading the charge. He stops and gets it blocked from behind, and also the oh, foul. oh boy, what are they going to call this? A technical foul. Well, technical foul on Duncan. They get a foul on the release on the shot. Right now, Prince thought as he released that shot that he was hit in the hand. As the ball, keep an eye on it. Now watch to the right of your screen. See, there's the hit right there on the hand. So when the call was for the two-shot foul, then we had the, whatever was said was said, and Joey, unfortunately, the Duncan heard it. <laughs> and Billis goes to the free throw line. That's the technical. Popovich going over things with Joe Crawford. I mentioned earlier Crawford refereeing his 35th game in an NBA Finals. And now Prince will go to the line with a chance to give Detroit the lead. Meanwhile, the foul was on Duncan, and that's his second. So he, Muhammad, and Ginobili each have two. No piston has two. The first of two is good for Prince here. Stuart Scott, Stuart. Al, the guy at the foul line, Tayshawn Prince, by far the quietest guy in the locker room last season. I mean, he, he barely spoke to us. But this year, I asked him, I said, Tayshawn, who's the quietest guy? And he said, oh, it's Antonio McDyce, the new guy. Well, of course, I got to go do my homework. So I go to Antonio and I say, look, Tayshawn said you're the quietest guy on the team. And Antonio just started laughing. He said, Tayshawn, he said, he doesn't even talk. When he talks, he whispers. He said, I've never even really heard anything he said. He said, at least I smile and I laugh. Tayshawn never changes expressions. His expression this game so far, though, a lot more energy than last time, Al. No question about that. He had three points the other night, 11 in game one, and that turnover belongs to San Antonio, and they turn it over to Detroit. The Pistons up by one, 28-27. San Antonio hot from the field. Pistons a little cooler, but Detroit on top. Seven blocks, five by Wallace. Ginobili with a rebound off the Prince miss. You're in the second quarter. There are nine and a half minutes to go. You have Duncan with two fouls. You cannot go asleep. Rasheed Wallace must attack Tim Duncan down in the low post area and force him to play him. Turned around over McDice. He's seesawing. The Spurs now by one. You know, it's nice to stay with people that might be hot. But the key thing in this game right now is you have excellent half-court defense, San Antonio, below. The thing is, is go at Duncan and force Duncan to play you. Hamilton got free off the curl but missed. Duncan with the rebound. Now Ginobili, he has two fouls. Free for three. Robinson missing. This ball underneath. Speaking of uh, changes and statistics and how they're compiled and all that just to go back to those blocks the eight blocks the NBA record in the finals game Ben Wallace with five they didn't start keeping blocks officially until 73 so Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain had ended their careers before that became a, an official statistic Duncan from the baseline rebound to Rasheed Wallace wow, excellent excellent pressure that time by McDyce now McDice tries to get by Duncan, has the ball knocked away. Yeah, he tripped. And that was unfortunate because he had a half a step lead on Duncan. And then Duncan gets inside. The shot doesn't go, but he will go to the free throw line. If you are going to gamble and go for the steal in a low post area, you better get it. Because if you don't get it, you're in a heap of load of trouble in this series. Because the San Antonio guys can put the ball at a high percentage. Foul was on McDice. That's the second team foul against Detroit. Duncan is at the free throw line for a pair. Let's check in with Michelle. Al, I asked Greg Popovich to describe Tim Duncan's personality, and he said, remember the Simon Garfunkel, Simon and Garfunkel song, I am a rock, I am an island? Well, Pop said, nobody really is an island, but Tim might be. He said, all you get from him is what you get from his actions. And in that sense, I call him a stoic. He does the right things in the right way, 
consistently, not in a Boy Scout sort of manner, but in a professional, serious manner, and he doesn't care what anyone thinks. So we saw an unusual technical foul by Tim Duncan. That was not his Boy Scout part, Al. That was his other part. Not right there. And he also, he's, he's, he has a pretty good sense of humor. Very wide, very understated. What else is there? Well, Everything he does is understated. That's right. He's a very bright young man. Rasheed Wallace got doubled as Luther came over and the ball goes out of bounds to San Antonio. Well, you can see the double team is coming once the player puts the ball on the floor. Up until that time, they will allow the player to make a move or take that fadeaway jump shot. If you are going to put it down to try to advance, San Antonio is coming hard. Big Ben is back in the game. So we've seen a lot of both benches, and right now looking out on the floor, you've got the 10 guys who started the game. Oh, well, Mohammed well, has that it down. Two on one. Wallace takes it from Phillips, and despite juggling it, thought he got fouled, but makes the basket. Oh, no whistle. Yeah, that, that was an incredible catch, okay? Uh, the fact that he saved that ball. He's a big man, 6'11", and he was able to save that and then score. Duncan. Ben Wallace with the rebound. Detroit with a chance to take the lead. And they do. Hamilton. Well, Hamilton has scored all of his field goals on that right side of the floor, down at the midpoint on the baseline. Hamilton six points tonight, three of seven on the field. Parker loses the ball. Three on one. Great defense inside. And then Billups will stop and pull up from three-point land, and it doesn't go, and Mohammed takes it off the glass. That's great when you score, but when you have a three-on-one, you, you want to get the ball up to the lead guy, and you're going to get a short layup. Force the defender to react. Parker off a Duncan screen. Mohammed tries to save and does. Spurs to reset. Down by one, San Antonio, 6.23 remaining in the half, and Tony Parker asked for a timeout. Well, David Stern and the entire NBA staff, they worked very hard to make the NBA an international sport. These finals are broadcast in the following languages, 45 different languages. Hubie and I will be doing the game in Icelandic. <laughs> Some of you probably think we're doing it in a foreign <laughs> language tonight, but hey, what can we tell you? Over three billion people have the opportunity to watch and listen. Tony Parker, of course, grew up in France. The game is on in France. Bruno Poulain and George Eddy are the announcers. On aura une excellente initiative. Il y avait Jordi Bertomeu, euh, le patron de Lero League, l'Espagnol, côté de David Stern. Oui, parce pour que avancer cela. L'idée est de faire des matchs, évidemment, avec une, à la fin une sorte de tournoi final avec les deux meilleurs clubs euh, NBA et le champion et le vice-champion de l'Euro League. C'est pas mal du tout. Ça. Et puis maintenant, euh, on est en train de nous écouter euh, dans la salle. Merci. OK. All right, merci, boys. Too bad we couldn't have put a Tony Parker basket in there for the guys, but you heard him talk about Parker and David Stern and Hamilton. Covers up because like he might have gotten hit and has it knocked away. Yubi, all you know about French is what? Foie well, gras? All I know is we have 420 players in this league, and we have 76 international players now. And when you think about it, when David Stern came in in 1984, the games were played on delayed tape during the week. And when you think about it now, tonight live, 214 countries. That's absolutely amazing. Well, Richard Hamilton, who wears that mask, it looked like he got hit 
I thought in the eye and of course if you get hit in the eye some of the shield will come into play here. Stuart what do you see from down there. Well Al Rip just got hit across the face and you know he's very worried about that he's broken his nose three times that's three nose operations. He wears that mask because he basically has no cartilage left in his nose. If he didn't wear the mask and he got his nose broken again it would basically just collapse. That would be the end of his career. He took his mask off actually earlier this season for a few days but he said he didn't feel comfortable and he started to second guess himself because he would think about it when he drove the basket. So he'll wear the mask for the rest of his career. As for getting hit like he just did he said whenever he gets hit on the face with that mask it just spreads out the blow to the to his entire face. He actually had the mask cut him one time above the eye but he said I'll take a cut above the eye before a broken nose anytime. And he puts it back on right now and the ball comes out to Rashid Wallace who misses and Ginobili comes away with it for San Antonio and almost on cue there's a halftime feature tonight which you'll see on Rip Hamilton. Tony Parker to Ori. Back to Parker. Six on the clock. And Tony gets hit on his way to the basket and foul. When you look at the Parker and you look at his game, see, he's now so much more under control than he was just a few years ago. And the reason is, is he saw the switch. He just lengthened his dribble going parallel to the basket. And what happens? They get the switch, they get the mismatch. Now he takes the big man to the basket and you pick up the foul. Duncan back in, Mohammed goes out. Ball was inbounded with 14 on the clock. Spurs trying to take the lead again. There's another one. Now Ginobili will take it through. Wallace got just enough of it. Hunter now to France who spots up. Parker. Ginobili you know, guarded by Wallace in this sequence is Ben Wallace on Duncan. Oh, great access to Another play. steal by Big Ben. How about it? 35 steals now in the playoffs. Number one for all rounds. That's just outstanding. Two steals going to go with five. Watch him, Hamilton. That's his patented area. Coming off that hard curl. Well, if you follow him, he's going to come right and get that medium range game. 15 to 17 foot jump shot. Parker living in the lane. See, the big fellas never rotated over. So if you're going to stand there and hug the post guy, Parker is going to lay it up in your face every single time because he can finish with that left hand. Parker and Duncan each with eight to lead San Antonio. Hamilton now leading the pitch. Yeah, yeah, you got the mismatch right there. Five seconds on the clock. Rasheed Wallace on the turnaround to drop it. So it's good to see it. If you're going to get that mismatch, Parker on Wallace, you've got to go down in low, make the pass, and let him operate. Duncan will work it back to Bowen. Three point attempt for Bruce Bowen from the corner on his 34th birthday to tie the game at 36. Now that's big. See, that's their fourth three that they've made in this half. They're shooting an excellent percentage. Once again, penetration inside, kick it out. Look for the three. In terms of three pointers, Detroit in the series, in the series, one for 14 from three point range. It was in game one, it was Billups. Here's a three point attempt by Hunter. Now oh, one for 15. Out, right? Yeah, we had a collision here with Parker and Wallace. Both look get out. up now. Wallace look out. A little more slowly. Parker. Then Wallace cut him off. That was excellent coverage by Wallace. Tony still dribbling. Shovels it off. And you get a foul call. As he threw it over to Bowen. What strikes you, Yubi, at this particular point? Well, the inability of Ginobili to be an offensive threat. That's the first thing that hits you from San Antonio. The second thing, the nine turnovers because Detroit has a 9-0 advantage in fast break points. And that was Pop's thing to his team. Limit the turnovers, keep them out of the open floor, and, and the momentum. Greg Popovich 
seeking his third title. He was the head coach in 99 when they went to the finals and beat the Knicks in a truncated season because of the lockout. And two years ago, over the Nets, Larry Brown seeking his second NBA title. It would be back to back for Larry. Rasheed Wallace. 10 on the clock, knocked away by Manu Ginobili. Detroit to inbound, the game tied in two and a half. And Brent Barry coming back into the game. Ginobili will get a rest. Well, right now, I think Popovich is trying to save Ginobili so he does not pick up another foul. Shot clock down to four. Hamilton knocked away, and it's a 24-second violation. Good defense by San Antonio to create the turnover. Anytime that you make a move on that baseline, you can count on it. You're going to be double teamed. Not only with your bag, but they're going to run the man to you and cut off that lane drive. They've been doing an excellent job on Detroit trying to eliminate the, the baseline layups in their half-court offense. Only nine points in the period for the Spurs in almost 10 minutes. Duncan. And Tim Duncan from outside, and the Spurs have the lead again by two. Oh, you like that guy. That was beautifully executed. They ran a decoy double screen to the right of the lane, which opened up Duncan, mainly because Detroit was rotating to help out. Oh, Barry nearly stole it, but it winds up in the hands of Tayshawn Prince to tie the game. Hey, listen, Big Ben said, look, I'm not only rebounding, I'm blocking shots, I'm scoring points, but how about my passing? That was a beautiful pass. Tremendous half by Ben Wallace. Tied at 38. Duncan. Tipped up. Kept alive. Oh, here you go. Phillips now. Three on two. Down the middle. Nice. To Wallace. And then what a block as Ori comes out of nowhere to knock it away. But Detroit maintains possession. Ah, you love Robert Ori's game. He never gives up on anything. He, he's all on the loose balls he's take charges he's running he's jumping and that was just a beautiful time block now parker he backs it out under a minute to play now that's one of the very few times that he had a head of steam where he could not go all the way now ori hits a three and robert ori if he wins a title here this would be his six. This guy will need a new safe deposit box. And along the way, he's just broken Michael Jordan's record for career three-pointers in the finals. And Joey Crawford stops play with a whistle here. Part with a foul. Robert Ory. Now, this is Robert at his best. And this has been... When, when you play two great defensive teams, and also your San Antonio on the road, you've got to pick up easy... Easy baskets. And you can see right there, Robert Ory with 43 threes now at playoff time. Passes Michael Jordan. The thing is, you need easy points. And right now in this first half, they have made San Antonio five threes. So you pick up five extra points. They have three second shot baskets. That's big in a half. Phillips gets bumped and will go to the line. Foul is on the rookie game of Uzer. Chauncey Phillips, the MVP finals last year when they knocked off the Lakers in five games, has five points tonight. Tim Duncan, two-time finals MVP. Diana Ferrazzi and the Phoenix Mercury will be in action this Saturday against the New York Liberty in the WNBA primary game here on ABC at 4 o'clock Eastern time. See right now, Greg Popovich made a move so that he has Ori, Brent Barry, oh and God. Bowen in there. Three key high three percentage shooters. Phillips missing the second. San Antonio a chance for a two for one should they so choose. Parker gets fouled. Parker went to the hoop. The hammer goes down. And Tony's on the deck, so we've seen Ginobili shaken up early. Ori. Well, keep an eye right here. a little bit, and now you got Tony yeah, Parker. Ooh. Boy, does he get whacked. Yes, he does. He gets right, right across the eye. 
right there that left eye but he's up Tony's up and walking back squinting blinking that was a very strong move going to the basket that's his job in this type of a situation 20 second timeout was taken by Popovich with 29.1 seconds remaining in the half. San Antonio off 41 to 39, and Parker will go to the free throw line for a pair. When you attack the basket as much as Tony Parker, you know that there's going to be a ton of contact. You're constantly challenging big people. Now, that foul was by a guard who got caught up behind. Chauncey Phillips goes for a hard block, catches him in the eye. And you look at his attendance during the season. He only missed two games during the year. And you brought out a great point now. You know, over 50% of his shots are down inside of that six foot area. He lives there. He makes one of two. He's the leading scorer in the game with nine. And Phillips goes all the way to the basket. And the shot clock is off. So San Antonio is up by one. And they can play it to the end here. Now, in, in this situation, look for a high screen by Nesterovich, and then they'll play off it. And you have to watch out for the spot-ups. There it, it is. is. They get it out to Ori, but Wallace goes out there with him. Parker gets it back with a second and forces a shot. Good Detroit defense at the end. They got what they were looking for, but Detroit was equal to the moment. They're able to keep the lead to one for San Antonio in a very tough First half in game three. San Antonio 42. Detroit 41. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. All right, with Tony Parker. Before the game, Coach Popovich stressed we've got to value the ball, and you guys have at least nine turnovers in the first half. Why is it happening? Well, they, they play with a lot of energy. They play at home, and uh, we have to be patient. We have to take care of the ball. It's huge on the road. If we don't do that, it's a lot of easy points for them, fast break, and, uh, and we have to do better than that. On that last drive to the basket, you took quite a blow to the face. How is it feeling? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's how Detroit plays. They're going to play um, very physical, aggressive. You just have to protect the ball, go strong, and see what happens. Thanks for stopping, Tony. Thanks. Al? Only six turnovers for Detroit, and there's the comparison as far as the bench is concerned with 11 points off the Spurs bench and just two for the Detroit Pistons as Larry Brown has played only seven guys today. Yeah, I, well, he, he's kind of stayed with that, you know, in all three games. Arroyo gets a few minutes here or there, but Arroyo sprains his left ankle in game two. So I think he'll be hesitant unless someone gets a foul trouble. Detroit inbounds to start the second half, and Chauncey Billups with it, guarded yeah. by Parker. Chauncey Billups has got to get going from an offensive standpoint. Right now, you know, he's just sitting on eight points. I think he can make a lot more things happen. Prince outside. Here goes Billups now. Passes up a three. Three on the shot clock, and Rasheed Wallace forced to shoot as the clock wound down. Nobody with a rebound. Yeah, that was a sloppy play, and I just did not think that Rasheed really was able to get off a high percentage release. Duncan turns, and as he does, he gets handled by Rasheed Wallace. The foul is on Wallace. That's his second of the game. As far as getting to the foul line, game three reminds you of game one. If both teams shot 14 and 15. And so far at halftime, San Antonio with seven attempts, Detroit with only eight. Duncan, three for a long two. And he must continue to keep pushing. I, I know you, Detroit sometimes likes to loaf down the floor, but you've got to get the easy baskets. And you've done a nice job at halftime with 11 to 0 on the break. Prince saves underneath, comes back out to Hamilton. Parker cuts him off, it sets it up for Billups, and he launches one from beyond the arc to give Detroit the lead. Wow. You know that he shoots it over 40%. He did it during the year as well as in the playoffs. One of the better three-point shooters that we have in the game. Only the second three-pointer for Detroit in the uh, finals, and that is answered by Bowen. Who else? Now, see, that's that's 
just knowing where the defense is going to be rotating from. Once you get down in the paint area, the diagonal right corner is open because Detroit is going to rotate out of that corner to cover the low post people. So the team's trade threes, and then Hamilton gets it blocked and he's fouled by Duncan. Third on Tim Duncan. I keep an eye now in the middle of the floor. Now watch what happens as Bowen clears to the right corner. See, they hang inside. You can't do that. See, you know that they are making threes from the perimeter. That is their sixth three in this game. And you can say in a tight basketball game, you cannot give up the extra points. Already they have six. That's Hamilton's ninth point. Phillips leads Detroit now with 11 points. And Hamilton joins him in double figures. And Detroit has the lead. Sheed Wallace is on Ginobili, then he dishes it off. Duncan prints on him. And Tim Duncan will get fouled. Hamilton came over to help. The foul is on him. That's discipline. Tim Duncan could have forced up an uncontested 18 foot shot to the baseline. That's not his area. Because there was time on the shot clock, he just slowly maneuvered into the painted area and forced the double team. Tim Duncan at the free throw line. We're denying his two for two. Game. Log on NBA store.com for your order your official NBA Finals championship DVD. Duncan, the only spur in double figures. 11 points. Ginobili has been red hot in the first two games of the series, has just four points, which is what he had at halftime of game one in San Antonio the other night, and then he had a phenomenal second half. Spurs by one. Great balance scoring for Detroit. Phillips missing the three. Mohammed up high for the rebound. Now that was a good release, good shot. He had nice flow, and we know that that's one of his favorite areas to release for the three-point attempt. Duncan. Wallace staying right there. Tim backs you off. Prince with the rebound. Now that was pretty. Quick feet. Ben Wallace, quick feet. Plus, he's got the body strength that Duncan cannot run over the top of him. Phillips at the point. Now, Prince. You got a mismatch here. You got to get a good high percentage shot. Drives on Mohammed. And scores left-handed to make it 48-47. Now that's that's a major part of Prince's game. Face up 18 to 20 feet, take the man into the lane, shoot the hook. We have not seen enough of that in this series. And he's left-handed to make that an even easier play for him. Detroit up by one. Here goes Ginobili, another south form missing underneath. Muhammad is there. And it's Ben Wallace who comes away livid. Thought he had the block and said he gets the foul. That is his second foul. No piston has more than two. The only man in the game for either team with more than two is Tim Duncan, who has three. Once again, this is where San Antonio is so tough. When they shoot, you must block out their big people. Muhammad, Ori, Duncan are fierce on the offensive board. Now, this is their fourth score on second shot. So you say, well, that's not a lot. Well, in a low-scoring game, it's a lot. Nazi Mohammed came over in the middle of the season from the Knicks. And he's got pretty close to two more months worth of action because that's about how long it takes 
to get from the end of the regular season to the end of the finals and you've got a, a lane violation here. Now well, Muhammad plays only a half a game and he's just consistent. He's perfect for this team because of his length and the shot block. He gives them two shot blocks a game, gets you eight points, gets you six to seven rebounds, and he shoots over 50%. Fits like a glove. And Popovich likes to use him early. Starts the game with him normally. And then in the third quarter. And then you don't see very much of him in the fourth. Now that's Ori time. Yep. That's when they slide Duncan into the center position. Hamilton. That's his bread and butter right there. Off the curl. Detroit up by three. He's been doing a better job in getting Bowen on that screen down. Bowen is trailing him. And he's more than a step behind. And an offensive foul on Bowen. Now keep an eye on this down screen. I see Bowen's playing him on the inside. And here comes the screen right here. Oh, you can see they could have called that a moving screen on the sheet. It's been about 14 minutes since either team led by more than three. It's been that close. It's been as close as Bowen guards Hamilton. Six on the shot clock. Oh, Off the glass. Oh, baby. Oh, oh. Uh, excellent timeout. Pop is not going to let them run out on you. But how about the beautiful release and bank shot by Hamilton? Griff Hamilton, who's really struggled in the series until tonight, has 14.6 in the quarter. Of course, he's being guarded by Bruce Ball, and here's what he had to say. I love that that everybody believes that he 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 stopped me. You know, I love that challenge because in my mind, I believe, like I said, I got every shot that I want to get, every shot that I want to get. I would never, you know, want to go come out and play any differently in that type of game because at the end of the day, I can live with every shot. You know, Yubi, he makes a pretty good point. He had. He had 36 shots in the first two games. He only hit 12 of them, but he did miss a lot of layups and otherwise easy shots. Well, he's shooting 33% coming into tonight's game. Tonight, he's not leaving anything short. Anytime that he's getting down on the baseline, he's scoring. And I think what happened to him in games one and two, he had a number of missed layups, which kind of shakes you a little bit when the ball does not go in the basket. But tonight, this is a typical game for him. He's getting his pet curl on the left side of the floor. They're opening him up on the baseline on the right side where they're giving him a one-on-one -on -one look. So he's feeling confident right now. All Detroit starters, all five starters have played at least 24 minutes in the game right now that is a little less than 29 minutes old. Manu Ginobili from outside. I He's now one for four in the game. There's definitely, he's not in any type of a rhythm. There's no doubt about it. Phillips lays Great. it off for Rasheed Wallace. Ben with a rebound. Great hustle. Great hustle by Ben Wallace. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Hamilton to Ben Wallace. Oh, can, you can see that coming. What a great look and a terrific pass. Eminem waving the towel. It's the biggest lead of the game. And now Tony Parker answers at the other end to bring it back to five. A 54 to 49. Now that's what you love about Parker. Now remember, Ben Wallace has five blocks in this game, and he is a monster inside. Parker went right into his chest and shot the ball right up over the top. Hamilton puts his hands up looking for a foul, which he doesn't get. Six on the clock. Phillips and Wallace falls down and that creates the foul. Uh, e excellent call. Mohammed grabbed grab Ben Wallace. Good call by the referee. Back to the alley oop we go. Now this is a great pass. How's that for eye contact? Beautiful pass and terrific finish. Rip Hamilton to Ben Wallace. And remember, Wallace set that play up because he came from the high post all the way to the baseline to save that ball as it was going out of bounds. And it separated from Duncan, and, and that's knocked away by Bowen underneath, but Wallace saves again. 
into Rashid this time, but knocked away and back comes the Spurs. Now you got to step up. Now, Rip Hamilton has laid off some beautiful passes here this evening, but you must anticipate the pass. Step up to the pass so that you can make a strong catch. Ori. Halfway through the third quarter. Rasheed feeds back to Hamilton. Ori with a rebound. Yeah, he left that one too high. He was thinking of a shot block. Now Ginobili will go all the way and score. And sooner or later, Manu Ginobili, you know, to, on a night like tonight, as was the case in the first game. He got hot that night. That made the difference. Tonight, only six points for him to this point. Yeah, but he's staying within what the offense is giving him. That's only the second time that he's attempted a strong drive. Remember, he's coming into this game, 27 points. Oh, boy, he got hit. With two on the clock, he gets hit. There's no foul. Yeah, I, I, I thought he definitely got hit on that, on that play, and he was looking to the referee for the call. Parker, oh, wow. look at this guy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's just a beautiful finish. Yeah. Not only does he get down in there, but he can make the acrobatic finish, and he makes it look easy. He does. Motown, and that means Kid Rock is here. Eminem is here as well. Marshall Mathers, Anita Baker is here. The Hitman is here. And Scotty Pippen as well. Former Bull. He and Jordan, that illustrious combination, combining for six championships. Marshall Mathers, as you know, UV is Eminem's. Well, you don't know this. <laughs> I know. I know that's his. Not only that, I have an iPod, and Stuart Scott does not, which is like the most amazing <laughs> thing. You and I are in the 19th century, and Stuart's in the 22nd century, and Stuart Scott doesn't have an iPod. All right, now we've cleaned up. The internal matters, and here we go with the game. 54-53, Detroit. 4-55. You, you always give me the Heisman when they go into that with Eminem. <laughs> Tayshawn Prince to inbound, 20 on the shot clock. Detroit up by one. Biggest lead was five. And Bennett Salvatore with a whistle and a foul on Rashid Wallace. Yeah, they get Wallace on a moving screen out on that wing. Uh, you can see uh, Larry Brown couldn't believe it. He didn't think that Wallace was moving. And it was an excellent angle because Rip Hamilton was wide open coming into the middle of the floor. Third foul on Rashid. Ori, a little scoop. Mohammed is there. Good tough rebounding and a follow by Nazi Mohammed. And technical and now you've got a technical. Yeah, Rashid Wallace. Yeah, you could smell that coming after the last call. And so Larry Brown put his head in his hands. Then you got Rashid going down the floor. And if he doesn't like the call, he led the league in technical fouls. And he gets one here. Remember we tell you about out being outworked. Now that is their seventh score down inside. That was just a great move by Muhammad. He did a nice spin move. Take your time, you know, regroup, and then go up strong to the basket. Ginobili with the technical to make it 56-54. That is Rashid Wallace's ninth technical foul of the playoffs. No one else has more than three. Four on the shot clock. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. So with Wallace on the bench to cool off, Chauncey Billis tries to heat it up and gives Detroit the lead again at 57 to 56. Now Chauncey is two for five and threes right now. And as Parker goes to the basket, the foul is on the Pistons. Keep an eye on this replay, and you're going to see Chuck. The clock is down now. You're inside of five seconds. Excellent extension on that shot by Ginobili. But remember, we tell you about Philip. He had an outstanding season this year, shooting the threes. He was ranked. He's up over 40% throughout the playoffs. It's part of his game. 
Phillips is third foul. Duncan's going to come in with Parker at the free throw line. Mohammed will go out. That's also the fourth team foul against the Pistons. So San Antonio will go to the line from here on out in the quarter. San Antonio keeps the pressure on you by the continual penetration going down into the lane. They're not going to stop. Ginobili and Parker are going to stay this way right to the end of this ballgame. Your defense cannot get lazy. The rotations cannot get lazy. You've got to get out and force him to pass the best. Each seesawing again. Here's Hamilton, and now Detroit has the lead, 59 to 58. And again, it has been close all the way. Now, now he made a statement on the TV because before that he thinks he's getting a shot. Now tonight, you can see he has not been pressured at all. Every time that he comes off the screen, he's wide open. Parker, long two. Yeah, they'll give him that. He's been struggling from outside, and especially outside the three-point area. But give him a lot of credit. He does not force anything up. Ben Wallace up top. Uh, they're trying to post Phillips on the right side of the lane. McDyke's on a turnaround. And Ben Wallace with a follow on the foul is called on the Spurs. Well, you love that. You love that kind of action. See, that's Ben Wallace's sixth offensive rebound in this game. Now, he chased that ball because he was on the one side of the lane. And when he moved to the right side of the basket, Parker was the only guy. Keep a look to the right. See, he's got, he's got Bowen on him, and now he's got Parker. So that was just a matter of getting himself in position. He knew that he would out-jump them and out-muscle them. Bowen with the foul. Let's check in with Stuart Scott. Now it's no wonder Ben Wallace is having a monster night. Last night, his wife Shonda sat him down and told him about his game. Shonda said, forget the officials, forget about everybody else, just concentrate on your game. And then Ben told me before the game, he said, Shonda said, I'm rating your game, and your game is like, nah. And he said it definitely set a charge up under him because he said, usually, you know, you come home, your wife says, hey, nice game, I still love you. He said, not this time. He said, when you get a, nah, your wife is, you know, pretty much telling you that you need to step it up. And, Al, if Mama ain't happy at home, ain't nobody happy, you know? No, I'll tell you what, after Barry with that three to tie the game 61 all, Shonda, an unpaid assistant on Larry Brown's staff. But she got the job done. Getting in section 110. Two twenty-three. As Bowen commits his third personal foul. Fourteen on the shot clock as the ball gets inbounded to Tayshawn Prince. Spin move through the lane, lost control of it. Here comes Parker. Tony free. Long two drop, 63-61, San Antonio. You love his game. His game is, he understands his range now. Now he it was open at three-point line. He went right inside the lane, took that 18 to 20 foot jump shot. Hamilton, Corey staying with him now on the switch. To Ben Wallace with two on the clock. And Ben comes away and holding his knee as it's dropped in by McDice, but Wallace came away grabbing his left knee. Well, there was a collision over on the left side of the lane. Bowen was knocked down on, on the ground, and then, uh, unfortunately for San Antonio, it opened up the offensive rebound. Ori. And Wallace with the rebound. Ben comes slowly down the court, but Hunter takes it all the way in and scores. Gets fouled, Lindsey Hunter. Yeah, that's a situation where Barry had an opportunity to force a change of direction in the pass. Now keep an eye right on Hunter. He he sees that he's got an opportunity here. Uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't it was uh, Parker, and you can see he had an opportunity to face him up and force him to pass the basketball. But if you're going to turn your body like that, the offensive player is going all the way. Bowen will come out. Parker will come out. Bano Udrick will come in. 
Ginobili is in to wrap up the period. Hunter will go to the free throw line. Detroit has scored 24 points in the period, and it's their highest scoring quarter in the 11 played thus far in the finals. Uh, and first thrown away. Yeah, first time we've seen the trap. Hamilton oh, for Hunter, but McDice is there. Yep, they're in the trap again. Let's see if they go for another one. Oh, another steal. And they do. And Hamilton will go to the basket. And McDice will follow this oh. time again, but no good. Under a minute to play now. Yeah, they had the opportunity. Two great steals. Totally unexpected. First time in this game that they've shown the trap. 40 seconds, Detroit up by five. Duncan to Ori. And it's out of bounds, and the ball will belong to San Antonio. So then there's a 7.7 second differential. 31.7 to go in the quarter. Yeah, big thing, thing right now is run, run your good play. Uh, the pop made the call from the sideline. Ginobili. Stolen again. Here goes Hamilton on Barry. Oh, and two. And it will count. Yep. Excellent call. Excellent call. A beautiful, evasive move by Hamilton. Now, good anticipation. Now, watch how he avoids Barry. Right here. That was beautiful. And then, unfortunately for Ori, just a split second too late. But don't you love him running that down? See, that's that's a guy not giving up on anything. He came from at least 20 feet back to catch up, to try to block that shot. Ori with a goal 10. Hamilton can't make it a three-point play. San Antonio can play for the final shot of the period. But Detroit has taken a seven-point lead. And Detroit 16 to 2, the differential is fast break points in the game. Under 10. Parker bounces it out to Ori, who dropped it, collects it, and then scores with 2.9 to make it a five point game. Yeah, you have time here now. You have time. Hamilton from about 35 missing. And that's the way the period will end. But a good quarter for the Detroit Pistons. Fourth quarter begins. Al Michaels with Hubie Brown, Michelle Tafoya, Stuart Scott. Detroit on top, 70 to 65, with 12 minutes of regulation to play. We've talked about the two coaches, what great pals they they are. Popovich, the best man at Larry Brown's wedding. We mentioned the other night that Larry Brown had read 130 pages of James Patterson Fourth of July, the day of Game One, and then he finished it the next day. He handed it to one of his assistants. So I asked Popovich last night, I said, what books have you read during the finals? He said, are you crazy? I can't even pick up a magazine. So I said, you've taken so much from Larry Brown. I said, this is one thing he obviously didn't take from him. He said, are you kidding? Larry knows everything. Me? I'm just trying to catch up. Everyone has their own way of relaxing. A mutual admiration society and two guys who between them have won three NBA championships and Larry has an NCAA championship to go with that. San Antonio to inbound. Here we go. A big Detroit finish in the third quarter to make it a five point lead. Right now at the end of three. Fast break points Detroit 16 to 2. The 13 turnovers by San Antonio allowing San Antonio Allowing Detroit to get out into the open floor. Duncan. Oh, good steal. Taken away, and that's another yep. steal. That was a nice strip by Lindsey Hunter. Detroit had three steals in the last 113 of the third quarter, and McDice puts it in. And Yubi, when you think about it, Popovich, he got Parker and Bowen out of the game at the end of the third, each with three fouls. He went to his bench, and they had three turnovers and a goal count. Well, you can't give uh, Detroit a lot of credit, Al. They went for that three-quarter court trap. They caused the turnovers, and, and they made things happen. Parker. Well, they'll give him that. They'll give him that long shot. Tayshawn Prince. Phillips respots. 
And then Ori with the rebound. Pistons with a seven point lead, equaling their biggest of the game. The Spurs' biggest lead tonight has been six points. Now they're doing a good job, you know, taking the ball from one side of the floor to the other. That's one thing Pop wants. Unfortunately, they've had too many turnovers. Duncan, and when Duncan goes off the glass, it is money in the bank. Yeah, well, that, you know, Timmy's been struggling here tonight. He's five for 13 from the floor. He's doing an excellent job on the on the rebounding, but they've been able to get him where he is missing. He's not shooting that high percentage of over 50 percent. Five point lead. Phillips goes to the hoop and gets fouled on the way in. Well, this is the guy that you want to open up now. He's a fourth quarter guy. You know that he can make the threes. You want him to attack the basket either off the dribble or posting up Parker and taking advantage. You cannot foul him. He's an 89% shooter during the season, 89% shooter here at playoff time. Foul is on Parker. That is the fourth on him. Phillips makes the first, and of course, the fourth game, 8.30 Eastern, will get it started from here Thursday night. And then if Detroit wins tonight, we're guaranteed a fifth game, which will be played here on Sunday night. Again, the NBA Finals, two and then three in the middle, and then two back in San Antonio if necessary. Left in a six point game. They're trying to play two man with Ginobili and Duncan. Oh, no. you got hand in. When you play San Antonio, the one thing you have to try not to do, and that is to commit early fouls at the top of the quarter and allow them to get into the penalty situation early. And because they continue, continue dribbling. So the big thing is, is when they're putting the ball down on the floor, you got to play a little soft, but cut off the lane. Just, just try to refrain from the cheap foul. First team foul, and you've got McDice. Will be called for the goal tent on what will be a basket by Brent Barry. Now Brent Barry's having an excellent game here tonight. That's his uh, tenth point, and it was on a beautiful change of direction move. Coming off two games in which he was blank to Barry in double figures. The only other Spurs, Duncan and Parker in double figures. It's only leading with 17. Chunksy Phillips from downtown. He worked that. He came off the screen into the middle and then set a double and get right back again in another pick and spot up and created a mismatch with Duncan. And then Ginobili throws it away. And Phillips. Oh, so wow. Oh! What a great move to negate Duncan's shot blocking ability. What a shot. Chauncey Phillips giving Detroit its largest lead of the game. It's nine points. Mohammed misses underneath. And then Ginobili and Phillips come together in backcourt. And we'll take a look at Phillips again this last. Well, the three-pointer and then the amazing scoop. See, that was just beautiful. He just ran up the back. How about this? Look at that finish. That was a beautiful finish. Mainly he had the presence that he had, the confidence that he could finish with his left hand. Little left hand hook to make it 78-69. And this one goes on Phillips. In the first 10 quarters of this series, Chauncey has three three-pointers since halftime. Here's Michelle. Well, in that last huddle, that's exactly what Greg Popovich emphasized. He said, fourth quarter is Billups' quarter for threes. We all know that. We've got to guard him. They worked on some different defensive strategies. He also told his team, we've got a lot of time left. Now, no fouls, stops, not fouls. And on offense, he said, we're not looking for any one special play. We're still looking for ball movement. That's what he's emphasized all along, right, Hubie? Absolutely. That's their game, and that's when they're at their best, when they spread the floor and force the defense to react at least twice. But Duncan has it rejected. And then Hunter is able to hold on to it. So we set with Billups up top. McDice and Hunter have come in here now and given him a quick nine points. Hamilton short. 
punched up in the air by McDice and saved by Detroit. Now you got to reset. Now you got to reset and get what you like. McDice from 19 feet. And McDice is on fire, Al. He's 5 for 8, and Duncan just looked at him rather than come out and close him down. And by that we mean come out and guard him and force him to put the ball on the floor. Detroit up 80 to 69 with a little bit more than eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. And they'll press on the inbound. There it is. Bowen gets trapped, but he gets fouled as well. Uh, that's okay. The main thing is, is that you, you prove to them again that you can trap them and almost force them into a turnover. What you never do is jump in the air against the trap. You saw the dribble and a jump. That would have been a turnover if you didn't get that foul. But the big thing is to show aggressiveness if you are going to trap. That was Hunter's foul, his first, and now as Parker goes in toward the hoop, he gets fouled. Tony loses his shoe in the process. Well, from now right down to the end, in this last seven minutes of 56 seconds, there are not going to be many gimmies, and by gimmies we mean uncontested layups. You're going to go down in there and force these people to make the shot, or if they do not get fouled, go to the foul line and make two foul shots. Nothing deters Tony Parker. They give him a moment to put his shoe back on. And he's very much like, if you liken it to a baseball player, it's a guy who keeps getting knocked down. A pitcher will throw at him, but the guy never gets intimidated. He just gets back in and digs back into the batter's box. Doesn't matter what you do to him, he'll come at you again. I, I like his attitude because he never, he never moans about the contact. He never says, you know what, I didn't get a call. I should have been on the line. He just plays the game and understands that it is a game of contact here. This game is played a foot above the rim. How about that? Misses both. Well, that's not out of the ordinary. We have four starters from San Antonio who shoot in the 60s during the regular season. Now, I know in this series they've been shooting 80%, but at any time they could go on a, a terrible percentage rate. Absolutely. And there's McBanks with the bank. Detroit with a lot of daylight right now. 13 point lead. Isn't it great when you make shots? When you make shots, the defense is a lot tougher. Duncan's running hook oh. doesn't go. Look out. Four on two. Hunter will stop. Hamilton is there for the offensive board. Yeah, that's good. Get it out. Regroup yourself. Listen to your coach. Larry Brown is making a call. Ori ready to come in for the Spurs. Hamilton gets it. Muhammad loses the rebound and will set it up again with a fresh clock. Now, yeah, see, they have Parker on Hamilton right now. Because when you're playing Hunter and Phillips and Hamilton together here, you've got to decide which guy you're going to put Hunter on. <laughs> Hamilton gets the loose ball in the lane. I have a, everything is going their way right now. Right. You lose the ball. Yeah, one of your guys is there to pick it up. Yeah, but in the first half, that was San Antonio. They would get a blocked shot. They would run down the rebound and put the ball in the basket. The scene has shifted. <laughs> San Antonio took care of business at home, 2-0. Now, all of a sudden, let's see if Detroit can take care of business in their house. Stevie Wonder in the house. And with half the period to go, the score right now is the final score of game one, except the opposite, 84-69 San Antonio, the final in the opener. Ball and misses. Duncan is there for the rebound. Hands it to Parker and Tony scores. 84-71 Detroit. The thing is, now in San Antonio, you don't want to keep fouling, wasting time and giving them a new 24-second clock. You want to play solid defense, try to hold them the one shot, or get the turnover. There it is right there. There's the turnover created by Tim Duncan. Well, that was close to the backcourt. And now Parker will drive all the way in, get fouled. 
And go to the free throw line. When you have a double figure lead, and you're in this fourth quarter, and you're down inside of six minutes. Possessions are magnified. You have to try to not turn the basketball over. And then, when the opposition takes advantage and is out on the break, you must get the shoot. They must make the field goal. You cannot let them get down into the painted area and then put them on the foul line. 8 of 21 is Tony Parker from the line in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. Meanwhile, Chauncey Phillips committed the foul. And on Chauncey Phillips, that's five fouls. So Phillips with 20 points, been the spark, but right now has to sit with five fouls and 5.47 to play. Yeah, but this is going to be a short period of time. We just saw a quick trap by San Antonio. Nothing happened. Now they match up man to man. And Prince gets fouled. See, that's good basketball. Run your set offense. You don't have it. Take them strong to the basket. If you get fouled, go into the basket, you shoot two. Right? Good sound basketball, but you have to run some time here. Also, because you got to be thinking, Billups is going to have a short stay on that bench before he comes back in. Ben Wallace having a short stay on that bench. On the other side, Tayshawn Prince. It was Ben who got him off to a hot start tonight. But five early blocks. Prince coming off a three-point game the other night, an ice cold in San Antonio. Tonight has 11 points, and now he can make it an even dozen with that second free throw. Well, this is a typical Detroit playoff game. Hamilton and Phillips both have 20 points. Then two other starters in double figures. This is how you're accustomed to watching him play. Ginobili lays it off for Parker. Tony from inside the arc. Ticking down to five minutes, 13 point game. Big factor in this game has been the inability of Ginobili to get shots. He's only two for five from the floor. Naturally, the point production is only seven. Prince, That's one on the shot clock, Rashid. But he gets it back, and with a fresh clock, another three. Same result. Now, Ori, before he can get it away, you've got the ball coming back, and Ori going over things with Delaney. Now, just keep an eye right here. Now, Ori was just not out of bounds. Now, you can see Rasheed pushes it back up here again. It was another three. Ori stepped back in bounds. So you cannot jump in bounds, catch the ball, and land in bounds. And a foul here called by Delaney. Now, right now, the energy, the rhythm of the game, all of the bounces, everything going Detroit's way. Detroit basketball on the Greg Popovich told us today, we want to cut down, limit our turnovers. We cannot give them momentum out in the open floor. 18 to 2 on fast break points for Detroit. Ben Wallace after that free thrust with the dunk. So after Bowen commits his fourth foul, Detroit retaining possession on the play with Ori, and then Wallace with the dunk to make it 88 to 73. Bowen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The birthday boy, 34 years old today. That's his fourth three. Four out of six from behind the line. Bowen with 12 points. With plenty of time. Prince. 
kick out. Duncan comes away with it. Now Parker has got Ginobili on the flank. Mono spots up for a three. That would have created a nervous moment yeah, in this building. It, not in the cards today, though. Spurs in their three finals, this being the third, have never allowed an opponent to score 90 points. So Detroit almost certain to get that because they have 88 at this point. And Detroit will retain it. Norway says, wait a second, that's not possible. Right. Or Shot or clock is a three. Yeah, and, and Ari has a good complaint right there. I, I believe that on the reverse spin. I think that Rasheed Wallace just lost control of the basketball. That's what Ori is asking for. Won't get it. That's the downside. Upside is only three seconds for Detroit to shoot. And Hamilton is free. Four threes. I think it's safe to say it might be in the stars for them. It might be. <laughs> Chick Hearn might have it in the refrigerator, the late great Chick Hearn. Right. With the butter getting hard and the eggs cooling. 90 to 76. After three games in a best of seven, you can't be any closer than two games to one. Somebody has to have two. The other team has to have one. And that's where we're headed right now. No, I like it. And I like the Detroit game tonight. Four starters in double figures. McDice off the bench in double figures. They have 17 offensive rebounds. And they forced a good ball handling team like San Antonio into 16 turnovers and got out in the open floor. And they've held Duncan and Ginobili very much in check. Tim has been limited to 14 tonight with 10 rebounds. Ginobili, seven points, four rebounds, and Mono has turned the ball over six times. Yeah, yeah see, that was unnecessary. Uh, yeah, Bennett Salvatore was right on top of that. And uh, Rick Hamilton, you know, they, they came up, they thwarted off two traps. All you had to do was keep your dribble. You know, the main thing is, is watch the situation right here. See, so just, just stay, just hold it, turn around and face it. That's an offensive foul. So you can see the right arm go right out. 14 point Detroit lead, 240 left in the fourth. Parker swinging underneath and nobody to hand it off to. Wow, that was a swarming defense. That was beautiful to watch. He had an advantage, but the two white shirts just cut him off, did not allow him a shot attempt. 17th turnover tonight by the Spurs. How about this guy? Hamilton. Well, they needed Hamilton. It was in a 33% of the series to get hot, and he has done that tonight. He's almost 50% from the field. That's right. He has 24 points in the game. A guy like Rip Hamilton is a shooter. Shooters think every shot is a good shot. So consequently, tonight he's working hard. He's gotten up 23 shots tonight. And they're all in his areas, his key areas. And finally, he's he's come aboard. He's 11 for 23, making good 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 decisions. And they call that on Hamilton. And of course the crowd hates it. And Hamilton's all the way down at the other end of the floor resting against the stanchion right now and now he finally begins to walk away from that spot they're going to bring Hunter into the game with Bowen at the free throw line five fouls on Hamilton and Billups both at this point but the good news with Detroit is you only have 213 to play 15 point lead for the Pistons. Working inside the Rashid. Nice. Good nice. Mo movement all the way around the floor. And then Hunter misses with a minute and 50 to go. And Robinson has that blocked by Hunter. Now, Lindsey Hunter has been a pest out there. He's been Major. all over. Another steal. Nice. We've got Wallace to Wallace Ready. to Hunter to Wallace. Bingo. Said it earlier tonight. When you make baskets, the defense picks up, and everybody's playing with a little bit more energy. 94-77. So the Pistons come home. 
and a series breaks out. It'll be two games to one. Game four is Thursday. A fifth game is now guaranteed. There will be action here on Sunday night in Auburn Hills. They use the whole clock. Ludwig tries to save it along the far side. And we have 58.1 seconds. Now this is pretty. This is unselfish play. Watch the trailer in the middle of your picture right there. Reward the big guys when they run, especially a big guy who has been leading you in intimidation. Shot blocking, rebounding. Six offensive rebounds tonight. Three steals. The man has been all over the place. Never mind all of the intimidation where he has moved his feet quickly in the painted area and cut off guys getting to the basket. Arroyo off the bench for the first time. Darko Milicic is in the game. He's become known as the human victory cigar because when he gets in, it's like when our back used to light up. You know the game's in hand. And Arroyo from 18 feet. Duncan was 5 for 15 from the field tonight. That's his worst percentage ever in a finals game. So they held him in check. They stopped Ginobili tonight. And the Pistons pull away in the second half. And will win this game handily. And Devin Brown is there for the basket. 96 to 79, and that's the way it's going to wind up. The Detroit Pistons guarantee at least a fifth game. They make it two games to one. Stevie Wonder got it started tonight with a little pregame mini concert, and Hamilton and company provided the coda. As Detroit wins it by a score of 96 to 79. Well, they just continue the defense for the full 48 minutes out, and you like their offensive play tonight. They finally hit a groove. Stewart Scott. Thanks a lot, Al. And Tony McDice, Rip Hamilton, Rip. Finally, after two straight games of 14 points, he finally break out with 24. What was the difference for you? Moving around, you know, not letting him try to grab. And, 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 and uh, fight with me and things like that. I just thought if I just keep moving and keep running off as many screens as possible, I'll get a better opportunity at the basket. In game one and two, when you only had 14 points, it was a matter of energy, Coach said. Why would you all's energy different? I don't know. You know, that's a mystery. You know, I think tonight we really came out here and took care of business at home. You know, we did what we did. We defended. We helped each other out, and we got to win. All right, Rip, nice game. And Tony McDice, there was a time in your career not long ago that you thought you'd never play basketball again after three knee operations. What is it like to actually be in the finals? It's feel good. I, I feel that I'm fortunate just to have the opportunity to play with these guys and be on the court. Uh, you know, basketball in my life, and, you know, I had the opportunity to come back and play. I feel good. There was a time that you told us that you would cry sometimes at night because you thought your knee would never allow you to get back. After the game tonight, What's going on in your mind as you all have this thing now within one game? I'm just happy we got the win. You know, um, like I said, I was just fortunate to be on the court tonight and fortunate to be back playing. But, you know, tonight we, we just made one giant step and just got to go keep going and try to scribe and get the next three. All right, once and for all, who's the quietest guy on the team? Is it you or is it Tayshaun? Nah, Tayshaun by far. Yell it. Oh, <laughs> Yell it. Tayshaun Prince. <laughs> Obviously, Tayshaun Prince is now the quietest guy on the team.